enamel paints are better than acrylic paints. Sorry, that's not an acrylic paint. Acrylic paints and lacquer paints. Let's discuss. And welcome to Model Kit Stuff. I guess like most people of my generation, um, the hobby started with enamels as your paint system. Let me tell you how this used to work when I was a kid. And I'm going back here to um, the late 70s, the early uh, 80s. I could leave my house and walk five minutes from my house to get to the main street in the village. I'd cross the road in the village, uh, walk for another couple of minutes, and I'd get to a toy shop. And in that toy shop, I could buy Airfix Revell Matchbox. Predominantly Matchbox because they were, they were cheap, and there was loads of them in the, in the toy shop. So I could buy a model from about seven or eight minutes walk from my house. I could then, um, having bought that uh, chosen model, um, continue to walk down the main street, walking past the model shop, we'll come back to that in a minute, uh, and walk down to the main news agents. And in there, I could buy a model kit, uh, just matchbox kits in the news agents, but they had loads of them. So if I hadn't found what I wanted in the toy shop, I could have a look in the news agents. Or indeed, I could buy a second one if I had money left over from the toy shop. I could then cross the road and go to the ironmongers where I could buy a paintbrush and I could buy some enamel paints. Having done that, I could then wander back up, pop into the model shop and I could buy a new craft knife if I needed or a set of X-Acto knives and saws or a wooden model ship or some glue, whatever I needed, sandpaper, you name it, it was in the model shop. And then I could walk home. So within half an hour, I could go from having nothing to actually having set up my hobby. And I certainly can't do that anymore. But I started painting with enamels because enamels is pretty much all there was at the start. And you could get them absolutely anywhere. Um, I could get on a bus and in 10 minutes I'd be in Stockport and then I could go to Woolworths and Woolworths had these and they had um, model kits as well. Plus there was uh, a number of model railway shops that had this stuff in um, and there was a number of model shops and between Stockport and Poynton where I lived, there was a place called Davenport and there was a model shop there that I quite liked. I can remember buying the Matchbox 172 Flower Class Corvette in there for 50 quid, my most expensive model ever at the time, and bringing it back on the bus. So I, I had access to all of that. Now I'm limited to the internet pretty much. With the internet, you have um, access to this huge explosion um, that has been occurring pretty much since the 90s of a huge range of paints and products and kit manufacturers um, and it's quite mind-boggling at times but today we're going to focus on enamel paints. Now I am still a big fan of enamel paints and I know that many many people have fallen out of love with it and I want to deal with some of those elephants in the room and why people don't use them because for me enamels are probably still the best paint system now i admit i use acrylics and i use acrylics a lot but i am in the process of moving back to enamels a little bit more full time and we'll talk about that in this video too right before we talk enamel um let's just talk about what different paint systems there are at a general level and what the differences are. So it used to be that enamels were the main paint system and then 
the evil of acrylic came along. And actually, um, this really isn't an acrylic paint, despite what it says. True because acrylic paint is actually water-based um, rather than anything else. So uh, there is lots of acrylic paints on the market, um, lots of brands. You know, this is Hataka. Um, Humbrol have a brand. Um, uh, Vallejo are many people's favorite brand. Meng do them. Mig do them. Um, AK do them. There's lots and lots of people um, out there doing acrylics. The, um, the reason why I say this is not really an acrylic paint, and it, it's sort of, sort of um, a, a lack of paint, really, is it, because it has um, a, a solvent in it, um, which is why you can't really thin it with water and um, why it goes grainy when you brush paint it. Um, but we'll talk about uh, Tamiya paints in a separate dedicated video. Um, and the other paint system is uh, lacquer paints. Now, lacquer paints, uh, Tamiya launched a range of these um, a little while ago now, um, and they've been proving to be quite popular. And why are they proving to be popular? Because they um, have a, a hard finish. Um, and they paint really well. Oh, just like enamels. Let's talk about enamels then. There are trends in the modelling hobby, and the trend has been to move away from uh, enamels over the last 20 years or so. Um, and I think it's a real shame because I still think enamels are the best paint system uh, for, for modelling. And what's happened is we've been tempted away with all these acrylics and we seem to think that new is best so let's just visit that for a minute so over the years people have moved away from enamels and there's a number of reasons that people will give for not using uh, enamel paints they're smelly for example um, they're not easy to use the drying time is too long you can't put it through an airbrush um, they're too complex to use um, that you can't seal the tins properly and the paint gets a big thick skin on it and then you're trying to rip the skin off it to get what's left at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these things. Well, okay, so there is there is things that are pros and things that are cons when it comes to enamels. And if you don't handle them correctly, like with anything, they don't work correctly. So we're going to deal with some of those issues. So one of the main reasons that people moved away or uh, migrated, I guess is a better word, from enamels to acrylics was primarily because of smell. A lot of people were modelling in uh, non-dedicated spaces in their house. Um, and so reducing the odour was seen as um, not just a good thing for the modeller, but for everybody else in the house as well. And so acrylics became more popular. When the Tamiya stuff came out, um, it was a lot less whiffy than enamel. But in recent times, people have been justifying going to lacquer paints um, because they can get a nice hard coverage, it goes down well, they don't need to use primer, even though it's quite whiffy. Um, and that doesn't make much sense really because that's that smells stronger than enamel paint. Enamel paint will go down without um, use of a, a primer, like lacquer paint. Enamel paint will give you a tough hard shell, like lacquer paint. So what's the difference? Well obviously with a lacquer paint you can put thinner in, you can put retarder in and then you can chuck it through your airbrush. So that's the advantage of... Um, oh actually that is more difficult than enamels because enamels you can either use enamel thinner, no need for retarder, or even better you can use cheap as chips white spirit um, and you can then put it through your airbrush and then you flush your airbrush with low cost white spirit and that cleans your airbrush. In fact, it's easier than cleaning acrylic paint out of your airbrush. 
But then enamel paints are difficult to use. They're messy. You know, the lids don't go back on properly. The paint drips down your tin and it gets everywhere. They're just messy to use. Whereas you get a nice convenient dropper bottle with an acrylic. Um, but then you can have problems with acrylics, can't you? If you're honest, you can have clogging in the nozzle. You can have paint that leaks out. Uh, you can squeeze your bottle and it's not coming, it's not coming. And then suddenly you've got loads of it. And you've not actually got the control that you're supposed to have with it. Um, or you might get it in a flip top, like so, and that's easier, except for the top keeps getting in the way and, and oh look, paint still does dry. Um, oh no. Um, so acrylics, actually not that much cleaner. Not that much cleaner again. And there is no difference between using that and using that with its lid off. And actually, if you do the same things with your paints, you get the same results. So if you mix that in the bottle and mix that in the tin, um, slowly and carefully using something like a Badger power, mix, power paint mixer, one of these, you get exactly the same result. You can mix both of these in their uh, container. And then how you get it out, could be with a paintbrush or you could use a pipette um, and if you use a pipette you'll get absolutely no mess it's wiping a brush or a cocktail stick on the side of the tin that makes that sort of mess and then you can't put the lid back on and if you wipe your lid before you put it back on then you've not got an issue and a top tip from me is once you've put your lid back on Turn it upside down and give it a shake and that seals it and that stops it going hard inside. Whereas this, because of the way it's designed, you get paint runs down off the little plastic uh, cap on the inside and then that dries all crusty on here. And sometimes you need the strength of a hundred men to get the lid off that sometimes. Why would I go to enamel paints now? Because Humbrol are phasing them out. Well, that's also not true. What's happened recently is that there has been legislation change in the European Union, which means that um, some of the uh, chemical ingredients inside enamel paint needs to change to be able to be sold. So it's being reformulated. So it's coming off the uh, the market while it's, re while it's reformulated and then coming back in. At this moment in time, Humbrol have no intention of getting rid of enamels. And the more people that use them, the more we will have enamels. In fact, the more the price might come down. Because more people that are using them, the longer the production run, the cheaper the actual product is to make. Another advantage of enamel paints over acrylic paints is how well they store. Um, I've had enamel paints that have lasted 20, 25 years and I've come back to them and as long as the lid's gone on properly and it's air sealed, the pigment will sit there um, in the oil really happy. So it's all about your storage conditions. Um, I find um, acrylic paints over time, um, they'll dry up, they can go grainy, you can, you can have separation and can't remix them, particularly, particularly with metallics. Um, so for me, the shelf life of an acrylic paint is not as good as a shelf life of one of these. And I have had Tamiya paints that have gone hard, particularly when there's not much left in the bottle. Uh, and, and so there's quite a high percentage of air in the bottle uh, and you can find that they go hard. And again, it's all to do with proper storage and, and, and keeping. And we all have bad habits. Um, so uh, as long as you keep them properly, uh, enamel paints will keep for years and years and years so you've got no fear about buying a color and think i'm never going to use that again when it does crop up 20 years later your enamel paint is unlikely to let you down so what i like about enamel paints is that they're easy to store it's a compact a compact package um, i can store one on top of each other and still use less height than most acrylic paints 
although the footprint's slightly wider, there's not really much in it. So I like the fact that they're easier to store. Um, I like the fact that um, they're in a, a metal container, so they're much less likely to get damaged than my uh, acrylic paints. Now, it's not often a damage a bottle, um, but I have um, in the past um, crushed them accidentally and, and things like that. It's much better once you've got a, a dedicated space and dedicated storage, but um, if you're working out of Tupperware boxes or tins and things like that, these just seem to work better somehow. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some um, do's and don'ts with enamels. Firstly, don't get your enamel tin and shake it because you're not going to make a massive amount of difference agitating it by shaking it. And what you're doing is you're getting lots of paint on the lid. So when you take the lid off, that's when you get the a big drip that immediately runs down into the um, rim of the, the lid and that's what helps make a mess of your tin. I've learned that the hard way as all kids did. So the best thing to do is actually not agitate your paint before you take the lid off. And then use a small screwdriver head to get underneath and just go round and prise it off gently. Not one area because that's going to bend your lid and then you've got the risk of misshaping your lid and not being airtight when you put it back on. So you can see, taking that off, no drips. Then the best way to mix enamel paint is to use an electric paint mixer. And what I like to do is, is go in and stir first with the paint mixer switched off. Um, if you've not used the paint for a long time or it, it's a new paint and it might have been on a shelf for a little while, then you'll find you've got quite a thick sediment at the bottom. So I like to get that broken up a little bit. Um, so I'm squishing it about and breaking it on into little chunks and just moving it around the paint. There you can see it's all lumpy. And then once I think I've got it moving a little bit and I'm starting to mix it, I've made a mess there, haven't I? Then I, I can put the mixer on. And I keep it at the bottom to start with and let it start breaking stuff up. And then when the consistency thickens up and we know that the paint pigment is starting to mix in, we can then move it around a little bit get into the edges and then lift the paint mixer up a little bit so we're stirring throughout the paint and when you can hear the motor is starting to ease off that's when you know that your paint is an even consistency so enamel paints tend to be fairly thick in their consistency so we've given that a good mix now. And when I was a, a youngster, I'm just going to put too much paint in because that's what I always do. Uh, when I was a youngster, I used to paint straight from the tin. And you shouldn't really do that, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But let's deal with cleaning that up and cleaning that up. So, yeah, we've made a little bit of a mess. Now, if there was big chunks in there, I might give it a wipe with a bit of tissue with a small amount of um, um, thinner, enamel thinner or white spirit. But because it was mainly the thin, um, oily paint from the surface that went in there, I can uh, just do that and that'll be fine and it'll just dry there. So I'm going to immediately put the lid on to avoid any accidents. So we make sure that's pressed down, give it a little shake, that seals it in. That will keep for years. Now, if I don't need that for another five years, not a problem. So clearing my stirrer, I've got a jar here of white spirit. Um, and all I'm going to do is put it in the jar of white spirit. <laughs> give it a whiz up and then wipe it that is clean it's quick it's simple 
and no cocktail sticks have been harmed in this process. So when it comes to thinning enamel paint, um, low odor white spirit is a good way to go. It's, it's very, very cheap. It's easy to get hold of. Uh, you can get it in some of the discount stores. You can get it in places, um, um, hardware stores, B&Q and the like. Um, or you can use Humbrol's um, branded enamel thinners. It's a more expensive option, um, but you know it's going to do exactly what you want. Now, uh, either of those will do perfectly well. And to prove the point, we're going to use some white spirit. Now, when it comes to um, painting, let's talk about how to paint with enamel paints. Now, I'm going to only do a paintbrush. Um, I am going to do a completely separate video on how to use enamels through an airbrush uh, because there is a certain approach to get best results and to deal with that big issue of drying time, which is a bit of a myth, really. So if you paint with enamel paint straight from the tin, um, it's quite thick and it's quite gloopy. Um, and what you'll end up with is lots and lots of um, brush marks. Because the paint's really thick, it's um, between the bris where, where the bristles are making contact, it's thinner, and you've got mounds of paint, and it's very uneven. Um, so you're going to have brush marks, which means you're going to need to do more layers of paint. You're also uh, going to have a slower drying time because where the paint is thick, it's going to take a while to dry. So best policy is to thin it and to thin it by at least 50%. You can see it mixes in really easily. And that would be the right consistency now to put that through your airbrush if you wanted. And the best way of using acrylic um, enamel paint, sorry, is the same way as you do it with an airbrush. Lots of thin layers build up your colour saturation through paint layers. Less is more. That also means that your drying time is a lot quicker. Now, on an enamel paint, you have uh, a skin drying time and then you have a, um, an underneath the skin drying time. So you have to think of it as two layers. Your top layer that's exposed to the air will dry quicker and it'll be touch dry, which will allow you to work through a project fairly quickly underneath is slower and for it to be hard to put masking tape on for example you do need to leave it at least 24 hours ideally 48 hours um, but within half an hour to an hour of putting it on if you put it on rightly you can be putting other colors on if you're not masking easily easily so We've got this thinned out. We're gonna, like I say, do it by brush and I'm gonna do it over these textured areas. And what you can see is it's nice and thin. And we can work with it. Because um, it's an enamel paint, um, it's initial drying time, even when it's warm, is a little bit slower, but only a little bit slower than acrylics. So you do have more time to move around. Now what I'm doing now, manipulating it with a brush, I cannot do with a Tamiya paint. Um, because with a Tamiya paint, the alcohol starts flashing off quite quickly. Um, and so if I went over it with a brush like I'm doing now, it'd start gathering it up and it'd get lumpy. And that's the main reason why I don't like Tamiya paints particularly. So you can see that's gone down quite quite thin it's almost a wash so actually it could probably get away with um, a bit more paint in there and making it a little bit thinner uh, a, a little bit thicker um, if I wanted to but you can see how that goes down 
really nicely. And even though when I first put it on, it looks like I've got brush strokes, you can see here, those brush strokes are looking a lot less prominent. And when that's dry, we can go over and give it a second coat and that'll start getting steadily heavier. So we can do with a paintbrush and enamel paints what you're doing with acrylic paints and an airbrush. Now, because this is an oil-based paint, if I've gone somewhere with my paint that I don't want to go, then um, all I need to do is go in with a little bit of the white spirit um, and I can remove the paint with my paintbrush and take that paint away. Much easier than working with uh, an acrylic paint. Which is why a lot of washers are enamel, because Enamel is actually easier to work with. So uh, about 10 minutes has passed since we put that first coat on and it is dry enough now for me to put the second coat on. And so making sure I've not got too much on my brush, I can go over this now and put a second coat on. And you can see how we're starting to build up the color saturation. So I'm going to do um, a couple of panels that are separate so you can see the difference that makes. Now, if you're using acrylics and an airbrush, it's the same process, and I'll openly admit it's a little bit quicker doing it on an airbrush because you can force dry an acrylic paint using the air from the airbrush, so on and so forth. Um, but I'm proving that you can actually do it with um, enamels and it's perfectly um, easy to control. So let's just see how that dries. So the optimum number of br thinned brush um, coats of enamel paint is about five in my experience. So there you have it. It's easy to use the um, enamel paints and to clean up your brush, you're just using um, the white spirit. It's nice and easy um, to clean your brush and to clean your palette. Again, you're just using the white spirit. Nothing could be easier. And that would be the same process for cleaning your air. Now I am going to be doing a, a build project soon where I'm only going to be using enamel paints and I will be airbrushing with enamel paints, and we'll show you how that's done. Now, I'm not for a minute saying that everyone should rush out and buy a load of enamel paints and scrap all their acrylic paints, but what I am saying is, don't rule out enamel paints. They have lots and lots of great uses, and for me, you get a really good finish with enamel paints that sometimes you've got to mess around with acrylics to get to the same standard. Um, they're really good for detail work, painting figures when you want the paint to dry a little bit more slowly, then um, uh, that, that enamel paint can be really helpful. Um, and when you're doing things like little cockpit details and stuff like that, where you want to be able to paint it, clean it up, and you want to be able to take your time, you won't be rushed by enamel paint, whereas acrylic paint, you've constantly got in your mind this is going to dry. How am I going to get this off? What am I going to do next? So uh, with enamel paint, you get a little bit of time. You do have to be careful because it dries a little bit slower. Um, it can run if you're using, if you put too much on using a brush. But as you've seen, it is easy to build up layers of paint. Uh, this has been on about three, four minutes now. Um, and it's already starting to get to the point where I could put another layer on in, say, another five, five six minutes, if I wished. Um, using an airbrush makes it even easier because you put it down finer, it's drier quicker, um, uh, and you can work with it um, more effectively, and I will show you that. But for now, this is Humbrol Enamel. Um, I've talked you through the product. Um, is it smellier than acrylic? 
Yes, a little bit, but not as much as lacquer. Um, is it cost effective? It's about the same price. Um, you know, there's not much in it. Um, when you consider the consistency, the viscosity of the paint, and the fact that you're actually getting twice as much out of the tin because you're, you're thinning it by about 50%, then, yeah, absolutely, it's good value for money. It's easier to store. It keeps for a long time. You'll have less issues with it um, drying up, clogging, um, and that sort of thing. It's easier to clean up on your model. It's easier to make washers. Um, it's easy to mix. Do consider your enamel paints and whether you should have more enamel paints in your arsenal. Okay, I hope that was uh, interesting and informative, especially if you're new to the hobby or coming back to the hobby and have sort of ruled out enamels. Just wanted people to think again. All right, take care, everyone. You enjoy your modeling, and I will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.